Can you think of a time in your life when the unexpected happened twice? Do you believe in signs? And maybe what do you do when you think it's a sign? Do you continue forward or do you consider a hard pivot? The young man I have on the show today has impressed me since the first moment we met. People say discipline wins. Darian Harris is the epitome of that statement. After experiencing the exact same hamstring injury, almost identically, almost perfectly, 365 days apart on the exact same drill while playing professional football, Darian was faced with the tough choice of do I continue down my path of playing in the NFL or is it time for a pivot? Darian made the right choice. And since then, he's been serving as a steward and captain to mentoring, developing, and shepherding the young men that play at Michigan State football. He's here to share his mindset and approach to help you pave new paths in life. Welcome to At The Podium. Hello again and welcome to At The Podium. I am Manuel Mesqua. I'm a financial advocate to my clients, CEO of our firm, husband, father, and a massive sports fan. I'm obsessed with encouraging people to dream and attack the unique vision they have for their life. And I love, love doing that by sharing the inspiring stories and life lessons of some of the highest performers I know. Today, I'm excited to welcome Darian Harris to the show. Darian's become a good friend since I moved to the state of Michigan. Let me tell you a little bit about his backstory. Coming out of high school, Silver Spring, Maryland, Darian was ranked in the top 50 linebackers in the country by multiple ratings organizations, rankings organizations. He committed to Michigan State where he became a captain, Rose Bowl champion, Cotton Bowl champion, Big Ten champion, and helped MSU earn a spot in college football playoffs. His college success led to a couple of years of football at the professional level. And after that, he decided to rejoin his alma mater and head up what they're doing around player development and engagement to advance not just Michigan State football, but advance these young men into servant leaders in the real world. He's launched one of the most incredible six-week programs for entrepreneurship in partnership with the Burgess Institute. And today he wears way more hats than I ever could. I'm delighted to have Darian here to share his story and several of his life lessons. Darian is easily one of the most impressive young men I've met with today. Folks, coming to you with another incredible conversation today, I'm sitting at Michigan State football's linebacker meeting room, sitting with one of the all-time best linebackers coming out of the program. Darian Harris is the Director of Player Relations and Program Advancement for the Michigan State football program, captain of the 2015 team. Played linebacker, Big Ten champ, Rose Bowl champ, Cotton Bowl champ. Has an experience playing professional football and then says, hey, if I'm going to hang up the pads, I'm coming back to pour into the young men that will play in the league in the future. Darian, I'm so excited to be together with you today. Oh, I'm excited to be on here. Incredible opportunity. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. So so actually, the the, the most important thing that I did not point out is obviously your beautiful wife, Olivia, yeah. and Naomi. Yeah. Who, who like, <laughs> every time we see Naomi, I'm like, she like literally belongs in commercials or magazines. Yeah, it's unbelievable, you know, just that, that um, you know, being a father um, is, the, as you know, it's the most important job you can ever have, uh, raising a family. But just to be able to, to do it here in this area, um, yeah. to, to have my daughter born in Lansing, 
you know, a place that I, I, you know, I never saw myself raising a family here growing up, but Michigan State has become such a big part of myself, my family, um, that it just, it, it feels right. So now to raise a young Spartan, um, cause of course she has no <laughs> option, but to go to Michigan state, it's just, it's incredible. Uh, and, and just to see her grow, uh, to take her around to different events, you know, volleyball game, gymnastics specifically, um, just to, to have, uh, you know, women's basketball. I know you were with, uh, coach Merchant also, and yes. every time she sees coach Merton Merchant, just for her to be able to see these incredible women in, in their field, be able to be around them. Um, and of course, with her mother, Olivia, and, and the cheerleading and, and dance team as well. It's just, it's awesome. It's tremendous. Yeah, I love um, I, I love that you immediately opened up with the significance of being a father. Yeah. Right? And and it's, it, I mean, there's no doubt in just how I've gotten to know you and everyone that knows you and is close to you. I mean, they they sing your praise about, about the man you are, the leader that you are, the servant leader that you are. And it's no surprise that what you're doing with the program is something that you hold even higher regard what you're doing as, as uh, Naomi's father. Um, I love the fact that you opened up with that. Let take us back to your childhood and, you know, talk about pre-football. I mean, you know, what are some of the memories that you have from your early, early, early childhood and some of the things that were most impressionable to you at that time in your life? Yeah. I mean, I had incredible examples in both my parents. Um, you know, my mom and dad raised me, uh, just to, to, to be a leader, um, to, to be a servant of service to others, uh, to give back. Um, and to one day raise my family in a, in a certain manner, in a certain way, um, you know, by the book, um, you know, by the Bible, you know, I was raised in the church as well. And it's incredibly, you know, my faith is incredibly important to me as well. So, you know, I, I was blessed and fortunate in that way. And I know that that's not always the case for everybody. Um, so I don't take it for granted at all. But, mm -hmm. you know, the biggest thing that my parents taught me, and, and especially, you know, when I'm thinking of my dad, is he didn't force me into football. You know, he played ball growing up. He played at Virginia Tech. He was part of his life. But for, you know, myself and my younger brother, he was very, very uh, instrumental in, in saying, you carve out your own path. You know, it, football was what worked for me. It propelled me to, 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 high, to heights and to, 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 you know, a successful life. But it doesn't have to be your path. So, just that alone, not being forced into the game, you know, mm -hmm. I found it, you know, I love for it on my own um, was incredibly important to me. But the core values that I learned from both my parents on, you know, um, not being lazy, um, making sure to surround myself with 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 people that are smarter than me, that are that are doing bigger things than I am at the time so I can learn from them. Um, just, you know, watching my surroundings, uh, how I carry and conduct myself, all those things were key for me growing up, even at a such an early age. and. Um, you know, now I'm able to kind of pass down those, those values, of course, to my players, but ultimately, you know, when, when my daughter learns what, what English is and how mm -hmm. to talk, you know, she'll be hearing those, those lessons as well. So you grew up in Silver Spring, Maryland. Yep. And, uh, I did find that extremely interesting. I mean, your father did play at Virginia Tech, had a good career. What position did he play? Uh, so he played safety, strong safety. Yeah. yeah. And, and what do you think it was about his time at Virginia Tech and playing for a another great football program that he really found as a meaningful part of what helped him transition into uh, his life after the sport and into business? Yeah, I mean, football is is the ultimate team sport, um, and it's the ultimate sport with with life lessons. So, you know, for him growing up in, in uh, um, you know, difficult times and difficult parts of Richmond, Virginia, not having a lot growing up, um, you know, being, being raised by my grandmother, his mom, my great aunt, um, and, and, and his grand grandmother who, uh, you know, my great grandmother who's since passed since, since 2015, uh, just hearing the stories of, of his, you know, childhood, him growing up, uh, you know, not, not having indoor plumbing, I don't believe until he was 12 years old, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Uh, it's, it's humbling hearing, mm -hmm. hearing those things, but you know, his goal was to make sure that his family was going to be taken care of. So once he got an opportunity to earn a scholarship to go to Virginia Tech, you know, his focus was graduating, getting that mm -hmm. degree, and then what was going to propel himself to the next chapter of life, you know, whether it be professional football or not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he was not going to allow not being able to be a professional athlete uh, to, to deter, him, deter him from still having a successful career. So he's built mm -hmm. an unbelievable business around personal training um, and been able to, to take that to heights that, um, you know, only a few have. Uh, so it's been awesome to see him grow that and continue to grow that um, with an energy that I, I feel is unmatched. Yeah, I, lo I love that you mentioned that because I was going to bring it up if you didn't. Uh, you know, I'm chuckling. I, I wake up bright and early this morning and I wake up to a text from Ben Newman and he probably had already worked out his oh, 1500 no 
workout <laughs> in a row. And I thought about how I was going to see you today. And I was like, boy, I should get in my 300 pushups this yeah. morning <laughs> just so I can fill the space a little bit with Darian Harris. But, you know, his father's had incredibly successful business. No surprise. You take in peck. I mean, you, you, you take your health as your wealth. Absolutely. And I've seen that about you since the first day that we met. Talk about when that really first became one of your core values as a young man. And I think about it in the relationship to the fact that you're coming out of high school, you were ranked one of the top 40 linebackers by a lot of the different ranking organizations across the country coming out of high school. Yeah, no doubt. So I started, uh, you know, really getting into weightlifting and, and lifting and, and that exercise fitness when I was 12. Uh, just, of course, being around my dad. I mean, growing up, you know, when he went to the gym to train, I would go with him and I would, you know, get shunned to daycare or something <laughs> like that. But I felt like I grew up in the gym, you know, from a very early age. So as soon as he felt like I was of age to actually start lifting weights, uh, we started just in the basement. And then it went to, you know, going with him to, to work out with his clients. And um, his, his big thing was no matter what, especially when you get to Michigan State, especially when you get to that level, you may not be ready to play right away. You know, it's just being real. But yes. you will be the most in shape player on the team from day one. That was the goal. Be in the most in condition and most in shape because that's what you can control. You, you know, you, you can't control learning the playbook overnight. Um, you, you can't control maybe not being at the size to, to excel in the Big Ten as a, as a true freshman. But in terms of being in shape, uh, putting the work in uh, and, and, and setting the standard in the weight room, you can, you can do that from day one. So that was always a, a goal of mine to be able to do that. And uh, just, you know, working out, being in the weight room, it's always been important to me. Um, it's always been, again, like you said, a core value of mine. Um, was able to run the Ironman Strength and Conditioning Award my senior year. Wow. Um, you know, I think the NFL ranked me as like the fifth strongest player in college football, you know, during my time here. I mean, those things were important to me, um, and, and I still take it to heart now. You know, it's still important to me now. Um, and it's because I've, I see what my dad does. I mean, yes. you know, th this past Saturday we won the game. Uh, and he calls me right after, and he was like, hey, y'all had me so fired up, I jumped on the Peloton for another 45 minutes. I'm like, this dude has just turned 60, and you, you would think he's like 25 years old. It's unbelievable, you know, his work ethic. But I, you know, I, I try to follow that and match it as best I can. <laughs> I love that. And what a game this weekend. We're going to yeah. get to that later on in the conversation. But coming out of high school then, walk us back, if you can recall, when was the moment or what were the series of events that took place that led you to Michigan State coming out of Maryland? Yeah, so, you know, I remember getting recruited by, uh, you know, Coach Ted Gill. He's a defensive line coach oh. at the time. He was the, the recruiting area coordinator for, you know, that East Coast. You know, yeah. he has ties there. And uh, I remember him coming to our winter workouts in the gym and offering me a scholarship. And, you know, at the time, uh, you know, when you're that age, you know, and we, we deal with it now with the, the, the players we're recruiting, every new offer you get, you know, you, you think you're going there. It's like automatic. <laughs> hey, I got a new offer. I'm going there. <laughs> Um, and again, fortunately, I had parents that said, you know, slow down, take your time. You know, you still got to go through the process. And, um, you know, I had about, you know, 15 to, to 20 offers uh, to, to choose from and um, decided Michigan State was a place I'd want to take a visit. So took an unofficial visit and fell in love with the place, the people, the culture. Um, you know, I know, you know, uh, Benny Fowler, who, who obviously yes. we work with very closely. I mean, he's one of the first people I ever met, you know, here at Michigan State. And so it'd be no surprise for me to say that meeting people like that oh. is, 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 I mean, that sells you right there. You know, you're in. Um, yeah. But, you know, once I kind of came back from that visit and said, once again, this is where I want to go to school, my parents actually took a visit on their own, you know, and I'm, that's a rare thing to do. But they came out here on their own and said, okay, let us actually do the due diligence piece of it. Yes. Um, and they came back and with kind of the same sentiment, like, okay, this is a place we would, we would you know, see yourself, you, you going to. Ultimately, it's your decision. Um, but let's take a little bit more time. And I was considering some other schools at the time. Uh, and, and we went on a family vacation to Puerto Rico, actually, that summer. And my dad said, hey, here's here's the date. You're going to go out, walk on the beach. Nice, you know, sentimental moment and all that. And you're going to call the coach of the school you want to go to. Um, so I ended up calling Coach D'Antonio on the beach I in Puerto Rico that. and committed. And uh, that was right before my, uh, uh, you know, senior year, right after my junior year. And the rest is history. <laughs> I love that story. I mean, there's so much intentionality and purpose in how your dad helped to create that moment in your life. No doubt. How special. And, and I'll, I'll tell you that like that, that story kind of makes me think of coach D'Antonio. Yeah. 
Because I think of all the stories that guys like you and and Benny and even guys like Greg Jones or or others have shared with me. Uh, 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 I mean, T Peps, like I mean, Pepper has told me so many stories where he's like, like I felt like Coach Antonio was like talking to me no when doubt. he said this, 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 this. And um, do you think that was a part of it of why that visit felt? Like it was the one when you Absolutely. really came back from here. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we talk about it now in, in our program now, but, but it takes me back to, to the time playing for coach D that, that shared language, you know, as an organization, as a team and, and what he shared with me, you know, when I visited uh, um, about what the plan was for Michigan state football, you know, at the time he hadn't won the big 10 yet, you know, right. so my, my class was, Coming in on the here's the here's the dream and let's go get it high you know, expectations expectations man uh, and and but we wanted we wanted that you know so <laughs> the following year 2010 you know he wins the Big Ten uh, for the first time and and you know we knew we had made the right choice but just the, those 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 the way he talked to us you know during the visit and the way he was specific you know he said hey I I see you as a member of the Eagle Council the leadership council I see you as potentially a former captain if you put the work in so immediately. You know, it put it in my head, okay, I want that. Like, I want to go for that, you know. And I tell everybody, like, you know, being a captain, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a political race, but it is something that I wanted, you know, from day one. I wasn't going to shy away from telling people I want to be a captain here. Uh, but he put that into my head as a high school recruit, that based on, you know, what I know about you, your family, how you were raised, the work you put in, you have an opportunity to be a captain here. Uh, and that's, you know, one of the major things that sold me as well. There's a theme here because, you know, I had Lamar Woodley on who played at Michigan uh, about a month ago, and he said the same thing. He's, he said that the reason he went to Michigan was because of the tone at the top, the leadership, and the way Coach Carr spoke to him. Yeah. And he made him believe that he could be a captain someday. And sure enough, he was. Absolutely. In, in the same mentality, same mindset. Um, is it different today? I wouldn't say it's different. It's still a people business. I think that there's there are a lot of additives. Um, that there is a lot of other things out there. You know, when you're thinking about NIL, personal brand, um, business transfer portal, it, it does come off a little bit as more transactional. But at the same time, it's still about the people. It's mm -hmm. about the people at the top. You know, and mm -hmm. we have the best in Coach Tucker, and mm -hmm. then it permeates throughout the rest of the organization. That when when we sit down with a recruit and their family. You know, we're saying, hey, here's what we see for you in your future. It's just we're able to talk about a lot of different things about their future, yeah. which is great. We're able to say here, and it's not just here's where we see you from an academic standpoint and from a football standpoint. It's here's where we see you positioning yourself in business, um, you know, positioning yourself in the community, you know, positioning yourself with, with our network and our ecosystem. I mean, you know, these can be heavy things to talk to with a 16, 17-year-old and their family, mm -hmm. but it's important to get to it early. Um, and now with the, the, the players we have in our program, they're able to attack certain things and, and actually have, a, you know, more of an advantage and get to things earlier than even we did. You know, so things we learned, we put into effect two, three, four years after Later. college. They're mm -hmm. putting it in year two in school or year mm -hmm. three in school, which is going to better them and their eventual family going forward. I want to give a special shout out to my friend, Dana Cornelius. Dana's the CEO, co-owner of Sport of Kings, the, the gear that I am rocking today. Yes, folks, I do wear more than a blue suit, white shirt, and a tie. Check out their website, S-O-K-F-Y.com. If you drop in the word podium in the discount code, they're going to send you an amazing, amazing, amazing package of whatever you order with 20% off. Check it out, Sport of Kings. Love Dana and Tiffany. I want to come back to that point you just made because it, it's clear that these younger generations are like, are significantly more entrepreneurial. Absolutely. Coming into college. Absolutely. I mean, these people, I can't tell you how many kids have already had a business, right? No in doubt. Middle school, high no school. No doubt. And I want to come back and unpack that a little bit and talk about the impact that that has on recruitment and winning the war for talent. But I want to make sure that we uh, dive a little bit into the four years you were here. Okay. Again, I want to make sure that I was clear when I first started this conversation. We're, to we're talking to a young man here, and I say young man because I'm like 15 years older than <laughs> D, who was the captain of the 2015 Big Ten Championship team, Rose Bowl champ, Cotton Bowl champ, was a part of the winningest senior 
class at Michigan State with 43 victories. Help lead MSU to four bowl games, including the 2015 college football playoff semifinal at the Cotton Bowl Classic and the 100th Rose Bowl. Journalism major and master's in marketing research. What was it as you arrived on campus in 2011? What was it that just set the tone for excellence at that level? I know it's Coach D. But what else was going on here at that time that just allowed for that to happen in four years? Well, you know, I benefited from having great leaders in front of me. Um, you know, when I first got here in 20, 2011, I had the, the pleasure of playing with Kirk Cousins. Oh. And, you know, being able to be with him for a year, I mean, thank God I didn't didn't miss out on that. Mm -hmm. Just to watch him and, and what he did across the campus. I mean, he galvanized the campus. So it's not just about what he was able to do in our locker room. He was holding events on campus. He was holding speaking engagements. I mean, so seeing that early on, again, before in social media was as big as it is now, um, to be able to get a message across an entire campus as big as Michigan State is, you know, I watched that. I learned from him. I, I formulated a relationship even if I was a freshman and he was a senior because, again, I wanted to get to that point uh, of, of being able to, to at least have a fraction of, of that level of influence, you know, on mm -hmm. campus. And then it just went from there, you know, the, the Benny Fowlers, mm -hmm. Darquez Denard, Curtis <laughs> Drummond, yeah. uh, Max Bulla, um, even a, a Greg Jones who had graduated a year before. But, you know, when I came on my visit, I watched him take the Big Ten Championship trophy from 2010 onto the center court at the Breslin Center during a game and get a standing ovation. And I said, I want to do that. <laughs> and I was able to do that in 2015. So, again, it's all about watching who came before you. And, you know, that's what I try to get this generation to do. It's a little different now, but I'm yes. like, you got to watch the guys that are older than you and that have already done it and learn from them. Be their protege. So for me, again, you, you talk about coming on an official visit. I've seen, you know, a linebacker, All-American, take this big old trophy and get a standing ovation in the breast. And I said, I'm doing that one day. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do that in 2015. Mm -hmm. I remember walking that trophy to, to, to midcourt and getting a standing O in the breast and thinking, Five years ago, I said I want to do this, was able to get it done. So, you know, watching the leaders before me and, and learning from them, I mean, there's so many stories about how they pushed me early on, uh, but I took the coaching from them and applied it, and then that's what kind of, you know, sent me to the path that I ultimately was on. Yeah. Um, uh, I immediately thought when you started saying some of those names, I thought to comment that Benny says all the time, and he says them on our weekly, in our weekly huddles as a team, uh, you know, always be a pro. Yep. And, Absolutely. And he's, you know, he said from every aspect of how I approach life on campus to, you know, the locker room, to the training room, to nutrition, to, you know, mental health, just, you know, the treatment of others, how you believe people feeling, it's like, just always be a pro. No and, doubt. And he spoke about that being, you know, uh, even if it wasn't a stated core value at that time with your classes. He spoke about how that very much was the culture. It was about being a pro, and that came from the tone at the top with Coach D. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, in, in many different ways, you know, that that is what we learned under, under Coach D was that everything you do in every aspect of being a student athlete, you have to approach it to the certain standard, you know. Mm -hmm. So when when I think back to, you know, the, the values that I learned from Coach D, his main one was complete your circles. That's what you always used to say, complete your circles. So it's. What you start, you finish. Uh, so again, whether that's school, whether that's on the field, in the community, extracurricular activities, completing your circles was, to me, it's the same thing as, as be a pro. You know, mm -hmm. how you uh, attack certain things has to be in a way that you're going to get the job done and get it finished. Looking back at those years, um, who was likely the toughest guy on the team at that time? Who? Um, Shoot, there was a lot of guys. You know, there was a lot of guys. I mean, I'd say Max Buller definitely set the tone <laughs> for us. Um, and you know, you're like just, the third one to say yeah, his name. I mean, being the middle <laughs> linebacker, you know, from the from the Buller Buller family. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're all over this room oh, right yeah. now. I mean, every single bull is up in here. Um, you know, I, I mean, I just I remember my my re, you know redshirt sure freshman year, and I'm not even you know uh, contributing that much besides on special teams. And and Max is sending me film from my practice at 11 p.m. saying, you know, hey, here's what I saw you did wrong. You know, here's what you can fix, all this other stuff. And I was like, hey, man, thanks. I appreciate you 
you know, you know, watching that and and looking out for me and 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 watching the film. He's in, in you know his response was, "Why aren't you watching the film right now?" You know, so it's not like, "Oh, thanks, man." You know, no problem. I'm trying to help you out. He's like, "I'm watching your tape at 11 p.m. and you are in bed." You know, that's that's not going to get you to the level you want to be. So again, some other people, and we talk about this a lot now, not being offended. Are you offended? You know, some some may have been offended by that. Love it. You know, somebody been say, hey, "Man, why, why is this guy?" You know. It's at 11 o'clock. I'm, I'm chilling right now. But he said, no, if you want to be to the level that you told me, you know, on your visit that you wanted to be at, you should be watching tape right now. You should be in here with me. I'm in the film room getting better and you're at home. And so that was something, again, that triggered in my mind uh, of, OK, this is what it takes to be an All-American, to, to be a captain, to lead a team, you know, and, and I knew that I had to pick it up and apply it to my game, even at, as a second year guy. You know, mm-hmm. it it's, doesn't matter. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter because he came in with that mindset, mm-hmm. so I knew I needed to pick it up and get it rolling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a um, gosh! I've heard I've heard their names so many times, spoken by so many of the guys that got to witness that or play with that and have that in the locker room. Like they just, as a family, no it's such an impression no on doubt. everyone's life that was around them. Absolutely. What's uh, is there is there another memory that really sticks out from those four years under Coach D? Yeah, I mean, you know, just just all the moments of of you know seeing you know him, uh, Coach Manny, uh, mm. just out, outside of the realm of football. You know, whether it was going to Coach D's lake house or um, you know going to a movies and and seeing Coach Manny there randomly, and it's just the way they talk to you outside of the building is it's different. It has yeah, to be completely. different, you know. But it it's in that way of 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 being second fathers to you and and yes. mentorship and. You just you see them as people, yeah. And so it allows us to see our coaches as human beings and and as people, and you know, seeing them with their their kids and their yeah. families. Like you know, again, I, I I was fortunate and blessed with my background, but um, it's important for for young men specifically to see that, you mm-hmm. know. And, and that's a key for me now too, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, bringing my daughter around, have, mm-hmm. seeing see having my players see me as a father is important because I want them to know that that's the expectation. Like that's the standard. Um, mm-hmm. if, when you get to that point, when you're ready, the, the expectation, the standard is you take care of your family. You, mm-hmm. you take care of your kids no matter what. Uh, and seeing that is important. So for us to see them in that light yes. was always important. Uh, and then you get to know their families and you get close to them. And uh, it just, that, that's what makes Michigan State special mm-hmm. at the end of the day. You know, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you said that. Coach Merchant was reflecting on how, you know, there, I mean, there should be no on and off switch. Yeah. Like who you are is who you are is who you are is who you are. And, you know, so to hear you recognize that, you know, no surprise once you uh, had those experiences, especially with Coach Manny, I chuckle because so many of them have referenced him as well um, in Coach D that, that it just, it reinforced who they were as men Absolutely. in every aspect of their life. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, you graduate from Michigan State. What were you thinking heading into what was potentially going to be your first season in the NFL? Where was your mindset at? Um, you know, I knew it was going to be a tough road. Um, you know, it was a lot of unknowns. And, and again, learning from the guys that had, that had been through it or were doing it already, you know, they're like, it's not what you think or what you probably thought growing up. You know, it's, it's a true business. Uh, you're going to have to put your head down and work like never before. And there's unknown. You know, things may happen that you can't control, uh, but make sure you, 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 you keep your mental, you know, in check. Keep your mm-hmm. head above water. You know, mm-hmm. don't let it become too big for you or don't let it consume you. And so, um, you know, obviously I had aspirations of playing for 10 years, like every, you know, little kid playing, playing any sport does. Um, and I just went in with the mentality to work and to earn my, earn my spot, you know, and um, the draft process is is interesting because it's a lot of unknowns. You hear from every team. Every team says they're going to draft you. They're going to pick you. Where they're going to pick you. You hear from head coaches of NFL teams, and they're like, "We got love for you, and you know we're gonna we're, we're gonna take you here." Take and then you get to the draft day, and it doesn't happen, but you still get an opportunity. And then it's again, it's it's a lot of unknown. It's a lot of you hear this, but it might not be what you heard yesterday or even five minutes ago and it can be very difficult to kind of navigate that uh mentally but Mm -hmm. you got to have good people surrounding you that that can help you through that who do you think at that time was helping you manage the uncertainty and the somewhat roller coaster like experience that you had especially you're coming off one of michigan state's greatest seasons of all time 
champ, 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 and defensive captain. Yeah. The expectations were super high. Who who was your biggest advocate in your corner at that time, helping you just manage that that sort of unpredictable experience that you had? Yeah, I mean, of course, my parents and my younger brother, but I, you know, I'd say outside of them, um, you know, I think to a dark West Denard. Oh um, yeah, D-D. you know, yep. Uh, you know, Tawan Jones, who who was my oh, roommate all yeah. four years here, and he had gone to the league the previous year. Yes, uh, and then a, a yeah, Trey Jets. Waynes, who yeah, who was my other roommate here, who had, had been drafted the year prior to the to the Vikings at the time. So, you know, I would, I would say, you know, ultimately ended up being, being those, those three along with Benny, but you know, Quez w- was instrumental because I ended up in Cincinnati. So just to have a familiar face, that's, that's like family w- was key also, but you know, specifically Tawan and, and Trey, cause they were, they were in it, you know, yeah. they, they were going through it in, in different ways. Trey is a first round pick. Uh, Tawan was undrafted free agent. So, yes. You know, I had just been to Tawan's draft party the year before when the same thing happened. Thought he was going to be drafted. Didn't happen. Um, she was able to kind of walk me through the process of like, yo, man, sometimes it doesn't matter what you did at the collegiate level. Sometimes it just it, it doesn't pivot your way, you know. But again, keep your head above water. Keep your mental in check. You're still going to have a chance at the end of the day. So you you sign with the Bengals. Then you end up going to the CFL, yep. playing for Ottawa. Yeah. Um. When did you when did you know that you might need to start thinking about falling back on this incredible education that you got at Michigan State? When did you know that? Yeah, you know that, that that's always a, an important question, especially for you know young folks to hear. So I put it in my head. I said, if I'm not on an active NFL roster at 25, I'm done. Wow. I, I put it in my head um, because I didn't want to end up in a situation where I was behind in the whatever you want to call it, business world, corporate world, whatever you want to call it. I didn't want to be behind by several years and have not gotten my foot all the way in the NFL door. It's different if, if you're rolling, you yes. know, in the NFL and you can position yourself to transition well, but you know, the bouncing around, even if I get a few years in and then to Canada and then back and all that, you know, I think what people don't think about is if you are going through, you know, the quote unquote, uh, uh, you know, regular path or or traditional path is a better way to put it. Mm-hmm. Traditional path of going to college, graduating, getting a job. By 21, 22, you're in an entry level position. You know? You've got you've had an internship from 1920. You're entry level 20, 21, 22 as a graduate. You may work, you may go back to school, get a master, but even 23, 24, you're rolling. Yes. So yes. if you think about a lot of these 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 young people that are are looking to pursue that that professional career which is fantastic we want to pursue a professional sports career but if you keep going once you hit 25 26 27 28 some are 29 30 still trying you're seven eight years behind when you're deciding to transition as we all know 28 29 trying to get an internship they're not going for you they're going to take the young right out of college you know, young, young professional. So in my head, I said, okay, by 25, I'm just going to have to, to, to make the tough decision to transition. Could I have still kept going? Absolutely. My, of course. my, my players tell me now, they're like, man, you could probably still be playing now. I said, <laughs> if, if I really wanted to probably, but I love what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm in my dream role now. Uh, and what ended up happening to me was I tore my hamstring two years in a row in Canada at the same time of camp on the same day doing the same drill. That was if that's not divine intervention, I don't know what it is. What? It was like you you've got to be done. Bro. You're you're it's time for you to do something else. I mean, it's the same literally the same day of camp, the same drill, same time frame, same injury. Said you gotta be done, you know. So I listened to that. I didn't fight it. I listened to it and it is the best decision I could have made. Wow. <laughs> I um yeah, like you're just your mindset about stuff is just insane. Wow. Um I'm just frozen here. I just can't <laughs> like, I just, it's never, it's, and it's like, tough, how, you know, how I the mean, how you say this, I mean, it, it's with such like purpose and confidence that like, no, it's just time. Well, I wanted to, you know, I, and again, I tell my players now and they, they laugh at me because they're like, they're, this is never going to happen. But I want people to forget I played football. You know, that, that's my ultimate goal is to football to be the footnote in what I've done. Uh, and I love the game. I, I love the X's and O's. I'm, on the sideline, losing my mind during games. And I watched the tape and, 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 you know, I can't, obviously I can't coach. And uh, I mean, I could have, I went that route, but my role now does not allow me to be a part of the X's and O's and coach and stuff like that. But I watch every, of 
you know, of course I'm in, in fully into our games, but I watch every other game. I watch every NFL game. You know, I love the game of football. I love playing the game of football. You know, I, I, you know, I love competition. I love to still be an athlete. You know, I go play basketball every Sunday because I love to be, I love being an athlete, but at the same time, I knew there was other things I could do. And I wanted to be able to do those other things. I wanted to make an, an, an impact in other things, you know, which was yeah. important to me as well. So I was like, why can't I just do it all? You yeah. know, and that's what I talk about with my players now. We, we talk about the one track of success. For so many years, everyone says, you have to have a plan A and plan B. Plan A is the nah. NFL. Plan B is graduating and getting a job. That is completely false. It is completely false. I say everything is on the same path of success. You can do it all, you can have it all, and you can put 100% into everything. And it means that you can now add to your resume. So I can put on, hey, I put on an NFL jersey, you know, yes. and I got to do, you know, work for Big Ten Network. And I'm now back at my alma mater and two degrees and, and, and. I just want to keep adding the ands. Uh, and I just felt like 25 was a good age to say, okay, let's transition. And it was tough, of course, but I, I just didn't want to be the one that was chasing it when it wasn't there, you know. And sometimes mm -hmm. you just got to accept, hey, it's not there. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you referenced it as, um, you know, your dream job. Yeah. Like the time was right. Everything fell into place and now you're in your dream job. Absolutely. Earlier, you made a comment about, um, you know, it's just a different environment, right? Serving and leading young men while they're in college, while they're playing football, while they're chasing their own dreams. There's an uh, environment of like, business that already yeah. exists, right? Because of someone's brand and their, you know, the NIL environment. And I, I noticed that you started a six week program, right? With yep. the Burgess Institute. Yes. Talk, talk about, talk about the vision you had for this six week program that really helps elevate and sharpen their skills around entrepreneurship. And uh, when you kicked it off and, and maybe share some of the successes it's had. Yeah. So, so everybody, you know, in the beginning and it's grown now, but you know, NIL came into effect July one of 2021. Uh, so a little over a year ago and uh, everybody immediately went to, okay, endorsements, you know, commercials, advertisements, you know, signed uh, to big, you know, apparel lines, all those things. And, mm -hmm. and that, that stuff's great. It's part of it. That, that is, NIL, but that's only one piece of it. Before uh, NIL, student athletes could not own their own business. They, they mm -hmm. could not be an entrepreneur as a student athlete. Any other student on campus can, whether it's, <laughs> you know, uh, starting a clothing line, you know, a, a record label, a podcast, uh, or even cutting hair, uh, you know, uh, redesigning shoes, anything that, that, meant you're selling a product or a service or a good to make money. Student athletes could not do that. With the change in NIL rules, that meant that student athletes could do that. So we wanted to make sure that our players knew that that was a possibility, that mm -hmm. you could be an entrepreneur. The endorsement deals and the advertisements and social media and all that stuff, that's fantastic. We want you to get those opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested, and, and most of, if not all the the, the recruits that we have that we sit with, what do you want to do? I want to go in business. I want to own my yeah. own business. It's of just course. the first thing they think about, yep. which is, again, fantastic. We yes, got to teach you how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so we had gotten wind of of the, the Burgess Institute had wanted to work with football for a long time, and we got on a Zoom call with them, and Coach Tucker was on there. And the way Coach Tucker worked, which I love, is he's like, why aren't things done yesterday? He wants everything done <laughs> yesterday. And so he's on that call and said, why haven't we done this yesterday? Uh, and he said, I want this up and running like yesterday. So uh, this was uh, uh, February of, 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 uh, of, of 22 um, or 21, excuse me, February of 21. And the, the whole goal behind it was how do we get these student athletes ready for the entrepreneurial world? Yep. So we were able to put this program together. We called it an entrepreneurship training camp within about a couple of weeks and launched it. Um, in, you know, February, March of, of 21. And it was incredible success. You know, we now have student athletes that are um, utilizing, you know, those opportunities uh, to formulate their own businesses or to at least start thinking about it. And, you know, it, we, don't, we don't have, you know, 20, 30 guys with businesses, you know, that, that, that wasn't a goal for everybody to have a business, but sure. it gets you thinking. And what's going to end up happening is as freshmen get on campus and get immersed in it early, then we will start to see those numbers grow to 10 to 15 to 20 of our guys with businesses. It's hard to shift the mindset of a junior or of a senior who didn't get recruited 
with NIL and with these opportunities and are who are looking to transition anyway. But the freshmen, as you said, that's it. That's what they know. That's it. They they they, they know it now. <laughs> they they know uh, influencer life. You know, TikTok, Instagram, oh. all those things where there's people on here that are getting uh, pr- paid pretty well to do these things. That's entrepreneurship at the end of the day. So how do we teach you through our programs about um, the entrepreneurial mindset, content creation, um, you know, social media management and engagement, those different things, so that you have those tools to at least explore it. And then the next step is you go over to the Hatch, which is the entrepreneurial in- incubator on campus. You take a business idea, business concept. They take it from ideation to creation. It's a fantastic opportunity that's, that's too good to pass up. Um, and, and we're looking forward to seeing how more of our student athletes utilize it. I- <laughs> I, I love it because you do have a few young men who do have their own businesses yep. up and running. What do you think is the next level for the current program? So you've got the program up and running. Yep. You've got a lot of the pieces in place. You're going to keep executing it, yep. right? Execute, refine, execute, refine, execute, refine. That'll create gradual improvement. Yeah. But what what's something that's missing from the program right now for somebody who's listening that they might listen to this. They might say, hey, I can I can be a part of the solution for that. So I'm looking forward to when, again, you know, folks from the outside that are have, you know, it's successful in in the business world or, you know, startups, things like that, to get more immersed and involved with our, with our guys who may mm. have ideas. Um, you know, essentially it's venture capitalist funds, you know, is another, you know, another spot as well. Uh, and it could be tough because, you know, a lot of times we, we, and this is what's so great about Burgess is you can try and fail many times, you know, that doesn't always work for everybody. You know, they're, they're looking for what's going to work, yep. you know, that people don't have unlimited funds to throw at things, but mentorship standpoint, um, just from the standpoint of how this works, you know, uh, 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 how business works, you know, for real, um, that's what we're looking forward to. So we have plans to kind of bring that in, uh, in the next year, starting in January, where we're going to really sit down and start teaching. How does a business work? Because everybody, again, they come in and say, I want to, I want my own business because they think that that's the way to, to building wealth. Fantastic. Let's teach you what is, <laughs> what, what revenue actually is, you know, let's teach you about margins. Let's teach you about profit. You know, let, let's teach you about, you know, what you may have to pay out in certain aspects. Let's teach you how long it takes to get a business to a profitable level. You know, in any business you think about, mm-hmm. I mean, you think about, you know, re- reading Shoe Dog and, and learning from oh. Phil Knight, I mean, it was 25, 30 years of, of breaking even, and he's bringing in 50 million a year, but it's going right back out. Yeah. They don't understand that concept. They just think, I want to start a business so I can make money. Yeah. They don't understand that what you make has got to go right back in, you know, in the, in the beginning as you're growing it. So really starting to sit down and break down the nitty gritty. It's the same thing we did with financial literacy this summer. We started at the very beginning with what is a bank? Like, how does a bank work? You know, not going straight to, you know, how are we investing in, in stocks and all this stuff? Let, let's let's start from the very beginning, because, again, that's the key. We do it in football. I tell recruits oh, all the time. that's right. I, you know, I ask, so right. I ask seniors, you know, I say, do you know your playbook? Like the back of your hand? I say, absolutely. I say, OK, every time camp rolls around, where do you all start? They say at page one. The same thing with what we do. We got to start at page one with every aspect of life with these guys, even if they have a background in it, even if they were raised in, you know, well in it, it doesn't matter. Every year and everything we do, we got to start at step one, square one, so that they have the true understanding. Same thing we do in football. doesn't matter how long I was here, you know, under Coach Narduzzi's system. We started at day one of the playbook That's every it. year with cover four. That's it. That's it. Got to do it the same way. Uh, so, so many things that I, I wish we could unpack properly there, but I do want to hit on a couple of things that you mentioned. Um, one, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with coach Tucker's mindset and intensity. I, I love it. I, I mean, I've just been watching from afar, uh, since he arrived here at Michigan state and I've just been so wildly impressed. Um, I chuckled when you said, I, well, why didn't we have that yesterday? Yeah. Why not yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Right. I say that a lot at work. Uh, I would have loved to have had that yesterday. No doubt. You know, what are some other things that you very quickly have taken to coach Tucker and said, Hey, wherever I go in sports, business, and life, these are a couple other golden tickets that he's given me for the rest of my life. Oh my gosh. I mean, just, just learning from, from him and on a daily basis has been, it's been phenomenal. Um, you know, he, he has this mentality of never saying no to anything, which mm-hmm. for somebody like him and in That's his tough. position, it's tough. Yeah. But he always seems to make time 
for, mm-hmm. for things. You know, he creates time in the day. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know how he does it, mm-hmm. you know, but but he does it. So, mm-hmm. you know, take the meeting, go to the event. Um, he he just he doesn't say no. You know, it could get jumbled the schedule a lot, but I've taken that to heart for sure. And I try to follow suit with that. Anytime somebody reaches out for something or wants to do something, I always want to say yes to it. Yeah. Um, and then again, just what what he's brought into to our program through his work with Trevor Moad, oh. um, who's you know of course since, yeah. since passed away, but that idea and concept of neutral thinking has been phenomenal. I mean, not getting too high, not getting too low. What are the facts? You know, what's the situation? Mm-hmm. How do you handle it? How do you move forward with mm-hmm. a sense of urgency and purpose? Um, I, I I just love that. I, I love that concept. I love that ideology. I love that mental makeup. And again, that's something that I've applied. Um, you know, to, to my daily life, take it home with you because it, it, it helps. It's benefit. It's a benefit. Um, and then lastly, just mission critical, big on that also. And we got a lot of that from working with the program. Um, you know, the, those folks who have, of you know, oh. uh, you know, sacrificed and laid their, their life on the line in life death situations for the country. Um, mission critical, you know, wh- what is the mission? How do I get it done? Even if it's not my idea, mm-hmm. you know, even if I don't even agree with the idea, mm-hmm. how do I execute it like I came up with it, mm-hmm. like I wrote it, like it was my blueprint? Mm-hmm. Again, stuff you take home, you know, you take it home to the wife and kids. Wife says she wants to do something a certain way. Even if you don't necessarily agree with yeah. that way, you better execute it you like it's it your done. idea. That's it. And make sure it happens. So it, it works, you know, and <laughs> I love it. to be able to take things from, they say, I always say, don't take work home, oh. but I'm taking these Stop. ideologies home with me and it's making me, you know, a better partner, a better father, better at home. Um, yeah. it, it just, it, and it's tremendous again, just to learn from somebody like that, such a background, um, you know, being an African-American head coach and, 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 mm-hmm. and just the way he's a, he's a leader of people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's a blessing to learn from him every day. It really mm-hmm. is. Yeah, I love that you said that, and and I love the fact that he was such a sponsor and advocate for this uh, entrepreneurship and innovation uh, program that that you've built. Um, I would say, from from my knowledge at the collegiate level, Division One schools, I mean, programs like this, training courses like this, these are not common still. No, not yeah. really, not really. Um, but I hope that they get to that point. And again, yeah. you know, I. You know, it, it's funny because I'm such a competitive person mm-hmm. in everything that I do. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's on the field, uh, playing cards, playing monopoly. doesn't matter. <laughs> Extremely competitive. Going to a zone. With player development, there's no competition bone in my body about it. Do I believe we have the best program in the country? Absolutely. Do I yes. want everybody in the country to do what we do? Also, absolutely. So I share all these ideas with other professionals across the country. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm in this for the benefit and the service of the student athletes. So. I say when it comes to player development, there's no competition amongst schools. It doesn't matter where. I want every student athlete to get these opportunities and to benefit from what these institutions provide. Because no, yeah. no matter you know what what you what you think from a recruiting standpoint, or you want all the best players to come to your school, every college for the most part has these resources and is a pretty tremendous institution. You know, even yes. the ones that I don't particularly like, you know, based on <laughs> being a Spartan. Competitively, yes. Competitively, you can't deny that they are strong institutions and that they can provide these same services and values to student athletes. So I want everybody to do this. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, before we wrap up, I mean, that's a complete mindset, though, right. thing, right? I mean, this sort of mindset of abundance that you have, this, like, commitment to servant leadership and pouring into others. Um this like obsession you have, and these aren't your words, but this is how I experience you when right. we're together. It's like, you're obsessed to leave everything better as you move on to the next thing. That's absolutely, you know? And again, I learned that from my dad. That's where the title came from. So I created the, the name, the title oh, that I have did. now based on what my dad <laughs> taught me growing up, which was wherever you go, don't maintain, advance the status quo, move it forward. Wherever you go, no matter where you're at. You know, we're not here to maintain. That's not that's not what that's this family it. does. We don't maintain. We don't go and and try to fit in and just keep things at the same level. We we identify where we can add value and advance it forward. So that's where the program advancement piece came from, because that's what I'm trying to do. You know, in every aspect of where I'm at, I want to touch different parts of the organization and try to advance it and move it forward. As you uh, as you as we close out, uh, what are two or three of the core values that are every bit a part of this program that everyone listening needs to know. And for future men looking at this program, they should, they should really think about. Yeah. So, you know, the first one is, is of course, keep chopping, 
You know, everybody yeah. has heard that and knows that and has seen it. Keep chopping is what you apply to your life. No matter what, let's let's go. Let's keep chopping. Doesn't matter if you're if you're down, uh, if you're behind, um, if if it's been a tough few days, you just keep chopping. You gotta push through. You gotta you gotta go forward. Um, and that goes along, of course, with being relentless, mm-hmm. you know, which is another of the Coach Tuckerism, just being relentless in everything you do. Mm-hmm. High velocity, nonstop. That's what relentless means, with a sense of urgency and, and, and purpose. Um, and, you know, what, what we took into, you know, th- this game, especially this past week, which was, uh, you know, everything, again, for us, that was mi- mission critical, which was one play at a time, you know, mm-hmm. six seconds per snap, uh, and just keep chopping. Mm-hmm. You know, you can apply those things to everything that you're doing in life. Uh, whether it's football, whether it's sport, whether it's anything beyond that, you know, when you really sit down and, and keep things kind of simple uh, and break it down, it's be really beneficial and impactful for you. Darian, I've I've so, so, so enjoyed our time together. Um, this is definitely a conversation that I want to continue. Absolutely. It's been uh, it's been an absolute uh, privilege to be able to unpack a bunch of these topics with you. And look, I mean, as as just someone who uh, has recently been blessed with your friendship in the last couple of years and just watch what you're doing here at Michigan State, man, I'm just so excited for you, Coach Tucker, the rest of the staff, uh, for the young men competing every single weekend, right? I think yes, there's, just, there's just no <laughs> greater battlefield. I, and I, I, you know, I, I hate to say this, I don't want Paul Davis or David Thomas or any of the other guys to get upset <laughs> about too. I will tell you, I say this to my 12-year-old son who's playing middle linebacker yeah. at Country Day. Uh, baby boy, there is no greater battlefield uh, in the sports world than the football. That field. is a hundred percent effect. Yeah, that's a hundred percent effect. It's been a it's been a privilege. Darian Harris, twenty fifteen captain of the Michigan State uh, Spartans, winningest senior class with forty three victories, uh, Big Ten championship, Rose Bowl champion, Cotton Bowl champion. Uh, Director of Player Relations and Program Advancement for Michigan State Football, uh, son to two incredible human beings that I look forward to saying hello to and meeting someday. Yes, sir. It's good to be with you. You as well. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening today, and thanks to my guest, Darian Harris. You can follow Darian on Twitter and Instagram at dharris underscore 45. If you like what you heard today, please be sure to follow, rate, and review at the podium on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow the show on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at Podium underscore podcast. Post about the show on social media and tag us, and we'll repost to share our gratitude. Also, consider telling a friend about the show. Friend of friend is still the best way to get the word out about our conversations. I hope the episode provided a powerful reminder that you have the ability to win and to win big with the right mindset actions and people in your corner no adversity or opportunity is too great to surpass and we'll see you next time